Well, with me now, AFC Wimbledon first team coach James Oliver Pearce, of course, making the step up from the under 18s head coach role for this season. How have you found the transition? Yeah, it's been it's been a it's been a tough period to come in because the the amount of games we've had Saturday, Tuesday, obviously with the the enforced break um, has meant we we've got a lot of fixtures to fulfil. But it's been for me on a personal note quite seamless. I've I've spent quite a bit of time around obviously Rob over Rob and and a lot of the rest of the staff as well. Um, so I've been able to gain some experience throughout the last year or so. Um, which which has definitely benefited, and I've a lot of the players within the within the squad I've I've worked with at academy level as well. Unfortunately, I had I've, I've managed to build a relationship with the senior players within the squad as well over over the last year, which is which has probably helped my my transition in. So yeah, it's it's we're one big family, so it's, it's not everyone's got respect for each other's opinion, which which is really valued, and yeah, my my transition's been been pretty seamless. Of course, you've got that attachment to the 18s at the moment. You've guided them to a very successful bedrock to a season, yeah. really. Um, but you've got to concentrate on the first team role at the moment, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, that, that's I, I still look out for their results. I still talk to, to the lads regularly. But my, my focus is on how I can support the, the staff and the players to, to make sure we're, we're kicking on and we're heading in the right direction. And yeah, that's 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 where all my energy's going. I, I obviously, we're, we're one football club. I want to see all of the groups doing well, and I I still hear about all of the the games and the performances and the individuals. But now, all my focus at the moment is on how we can be the best version of us at, at first team level. Well, absolutely. I mean, and of course, as well, you know, being in youth development, you're always going to be looking at not just the 18s, but the, the 23s out on loan as well, trying to make progress towards the first team, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, all, we get a report on all of the players that are out on loan. Um, and and all 18s and 16s reports go all into one group chat, so we're 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 all very aware. Um, there is yeah, we're we're all always up to date on what's going on with with every individual and with every every age group. So yeah, it's 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 helpful that that we we've got that clarity. We know how people are getting on. We know which, which players maybe need some support. We know which um, which staff maybe want like any conversations on how we can improve the players that we've got. So. Yeah, we're, we're always keeping an eye on and hopefully that's going to bode us well for the future. Absolutely, good stuff. And of course, turning to first team matters now, it's been a big week with somebody that you know very well from your, your days as a player at Woking Academy, Ollie Palmer now moving on from Wimbledon. Um, but our job now here is, is to find goals and that's what you're working hard on in the training pitch, yeah? Yeah, that's certainly that. We're, we've always said it and it's, it's been something that Rollo has spoken about for, for almost the nine years, ten years that I've been here. So... We're always we're always process driven, and we look at if we aren't scoring, we're always looking at how because it's not we can't just make a statement and say oh we're not scoring goals. We need to look at are we getting into the right areas? Are we getting the right bodies? What sort of movement do we need? Um, are we still secure behind the ball at the same time? Because we don't want to go chasing goals and then and then concede men, uh, too many as well in the other end. So yeah, it's something that we're certainly working on. That we we do a lot on the training pitch as well as in analysis um, whether that be of units or with the whole group so yeah we're, it's, it's, we're always looking to improve and obviously at the moment that's an area that we need to we need to get better at um, Ollie, Ollie was a big big player for us and, and we, we've seen that over over the last year or so but he's had a, he's had a huge impact this season um, he's no longer with us so we wish him we wish him all the best but the, pla- the focus now has to be on the players that are in the building um, yeah, and how and how we improve them. And for yourself, working back, working with the likes of Mark Robinson and Rob Tooley again, um, has the levels of banter improved at all <laughs> over the years with them at all? Um, yeah, this yeah we're 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 a close group we're a close close group of people so it's not so much about banter at the moment. Everything's obviously focused on making sure that we're performing. Um, but at the same time, if you don't come into work and, and enjoy the people, enjoy the company of the people you're working with. Then, then you're you're never gonna go in it and and be the best version of yourself. You dread going into work. That's not helpful for anyone. So no, the environment's great. And working with with the likes of of Robo, Rob, Andy, Bezo, and all the rest of the staff is yeah, it's 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 really enjoyable. But at the same time, we we're, we're really sure we've got a job to do. Good stuff. Um, of course, Shrove's been visitors this weekend. Um, last time we played them, Dapo Mabude, cracking goal from him. We eventually lost two one. We're in the midst of sort of closing down the, the transfer window again, but I guess your focus is very much upon at the moment preparation for this game, yeah. 
yeah, for, for us, there's no point thinking about what might happen. It's focusing on, right, this is the group of players we've got to work with. This is the opposition we're playing against. What are their strengths and how can we implement ourselves to 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 stamp our mark on the game, whether that's creating and scoring, how do we stop them from creating and scoring, where, where do we expect the spaces to be on the pitch, um, any trends that we're noticing in particular from our performances or their performances. And, and as Robo said, we, we, we tend to focus it more on, on us, but at the same time, we, we just need to be wary of how, how they might look to exploit us, but also how we can exploit them. Absolutely. Um, of course, team news, Anthony Hartigan back with us in midweek, came on as a substitute. How is he now? Yeah, Anthony's recovering well. He's still um, We're still managing him to make sure that there are no reoccurrences of, of the issue that he had, but... Um, with obviously Chris and Tim and, and, and the rest of the team behind the scenes there, they're making sure that Anthony's coming back safely and healthily and, and I'm sure today he's, well, today he's trained brilliantly so I'm sure that over the next week or so he'll regain his full sharpness and, and, and build on his momentum. So we're looking at the moment he, he's probably more likely to be benched than perhaps starter? Um, not necessarily, I think he's, he's, poss- he's capable of starting the game. Um, Ultimately, that we've also got other players that perform really well in in their positions midweek. So, anyone that's selected will give give their um, best levels of performance. And if Anthony is on the bench, that's a great sub. But we've also got other lads that have have played midweek that can come on and, and add to the course because their their performance levels on Tuesday demonstrate that. Someone else you know as well from your, your academy days working with Paul Callum by. Um, edging closer to that first team return? Yeah, Paul's probably just over a week away now. Um, trained today, his, his, his leadership qualities and his character is massive for the group. Having him out on the training pitch is, is, is just, it's just nice to see because he's worked really hard with, with all of the team to make sure that he's getting back fit and healthy. Um, but now it's about him getting sharp and making sure that when he does get his opportunity, once he's back fit, that he, he takes it. Um, but since whilst he's been injured, he's he's been a real positive influence off the pitch with several players, ensuring that standards are high, uh, supporting, re- reflecting with them. So yeah, he's he's a, he's a great lad, and I'm looking forward to him being fit again. Somebody else I should actually ask you about as well. Spoke to him in mid midweek before the uh, Ipswich game. Egli Kadja he could be back next week in training, possibly. Yeah, that's that's the plan for Egli. Um, obviously, with with muscle injuries, you have to sort of play it by ear and. and Keep re- reviewing where they're where they're at, but yeah, that that should be Egley should be coming back into the frame as of next week as well. But in terms of obviously the likes of Henry Lawrence, Alex Woodyard, Aaron Presley, um, they're all ruled out unfortunately at the moment. But there's no other fresh injury concerns. No, we as we were as we were. If not, if anything, we were, we were a bit stronger on the weekend because we've now got more players who've had minutes now, um, and obviously Anthony's Anthony's recovered as well. So yeah, at the moment, fingers crossed, we we keep a fresh bit of health and people keep edging back to, to re- returning for, for fitness. It's good to hear. Um, and the atmosphere we had, of course, in midweek against Ipswich Town, you're very much our eye in the sky reporting down to the, to the technical area, but um, we need more of that again this weekend, you know, that fantastic support the Dons fans generate. 100%. It's a, it's a cliche, but they can be your 12th man. They can really drive you on. And I think part of, it's, like, like we've said many times this season, it's a two-way thing. We have to give them something to, to cheer about and sing about. But they can also drive us on when we're we're maybe performing below the standards we'd expect. But I thought there was there was a bit of both on on Tuesday night. I thought we performed well um, in in many areas. They they punished us in two moments, and and the, the two or three moments that we had, we didn't capitalise on that. Um, but yeah, if they can continue to stay behind the boys, you're you're always going to be more more likely to perform when you feel that the positive energy around the ground and. That's certainly what we had Tuesday, so more of the same on Saturday. Absolutely. I mean, it is all about us, as you say, but I mean, what kind of threat are we expecting from, from Shrewsbury? Um, they're, they're a good side. Every, every, no, no game in this league is, is easy, for sure. And um, They've been really tight in, at the back recently and they've drawn a couple of games. But, yeah, we, we, know, we know what to expect from them sh- structurally. Um, we've got to look at ways that we can obviously be a bit more creative, um, but they're... They'll, they'll, they'll have high energy, they'll press, they'll chase down lost causes, um, they'll be really organised in, in when they don't have the ball. So it's about how we manage their moments and, and we look to, to penetrate where we can whilst not turning over the ball too cheaply. Um, 
So yeah, it'll, it, no, no game's easy and, and this one certainly won't be either.